Zachary here on your left and Art on your right. Zachary's playing the blue white stone blade and Art Makurda on the right hand side of your screen with a green white maverick deck. So are there any of the cards out of the blue white stone blade deck? It looks fairly standard but is there anything that stands out to you Patrick? Yeah uh, the thing that's most interesting is the use of Wrath of Gods in the sideboard I think is going to be amazing in this matchup. I mean, not everybody who plays, you know, not everybody, not every blue white deck has Wrath of God in Legacy, and uh, that's going to be, you know, something that definitely gives him a little bit of an edge here. Yeah, definitely not a card that uh, you're going to be expecting for uh, out of that uh, blue white stone blade. So, Art leads off with a windswept teeth, sends it into a forest, and it looks like he's green sends anything going for the usual. Go get Dryad Arbor, get that mana acceleration. Yep. Time to get ahead. It's uh, it's it's really uh, it's really amazing that that there's this creature that's like a noble hierarch or a land or elf or whatever, but that you can just turn into a scavenging ooze, like a Sally Pride Mage, a Scrib Ranger, a Gaddic Teague. I mean, it, there is a reason why it was banned in modern, you know? Absolutely. Uh, now he went and got the forest, the dried, he, yeah. Uh, well, with his uh, windswept teeth, he went and got just the forest. He didn't go and get. Uh, a savannah? an actual duel land. Yeah, because yeah, he's got two savannas in his hand. Yep. And so I think he just wants to, like, it's not even clear he knows what he's up against. He may just want to give himself that extra protection against Magus or Blood Moon, uh, against uh, Wasteland. I mean, it doesn't, it's not even that big of a deal. It's just there's yeah. so many fetches in his hand. Definitely the safe play. Looks like he's a, a little overloaded on lands at the moment. So he's going to play, uh, Art's going to play a second. Uh, windswept Teeth, crack it. Zachary's planes don't do don't do much. Sets him up. It looks like he's got a swords to plowshares in hand, so he is uh, ready to deal with anything that is the knight of the reliquary that he assumes must be coming now. Yeah. Anything majorly threatening from Art, we're going to assume is just going to go away. Yeah. Now mother runes may only be a one drop, but that is definitely majorly threatening. Now, is that something that you're going to use that uh, Swords to Plowshares Abs on? Oh, for sure. Because otherwise it's just going to blank it, right? Yeah, exactly. Mother of Runes is, is definitely uh, one of the, the, the most powerful creatures in these green-white decks. It's sort of like the White Goblin Welder. It's like, uh, it just has, yeah, yep. such, a, such an impact. Yep, and Zachary looks like he's got another Swords to Plowshares in his hand, so that Mother was just going to shut off too much of his hand for him to let it stick out there. Now, um... Well, we're gonna, like if he's gonna yet another plow. I mean, yep, Art's that's gonna three run, of them. Art's gonna run out of uh, threats really fast with how flooded he is. So uh, I mean, these green white decks are yep. not w super well known for catching up if they fall too far behind. So Zachary plays uh, Mutavol and passes over. Art's looking at a handful of land, trying to figure out exactly what he wants to do here. It's tricky though, because it looks like Zachary doesn't. Doesn't have any, uh, and mana. that's four for. Is that a Thrun? Oh wow, that's the. That was the one of Thrun, and that's going to be a that is the real, worst real tough possible. thing to, to deal with for Zachary. Uh, at least he drew blue mana, but he doesn't. Uh, his only his only game game one against that is going long and setting up uh, setting up some kind of equipment like a sword, a feast and famine, or a batter skull to try to hold it off. Yep. Thrun comes in, hit Zachary. Zachary's holding a Jace the Mind Sculptor. It looks like two Swords to Plowshares, a two Force of Will, and a Counterspell. And we've got uh, a, looks like Savannah a, Plains a Maze of Ith sitting in the hand. Is that the other? In Art's card? hand? Oh, it's in Art's hand, it looks like a Wasteland, Swords to Plowshares, and uh, the second Savannah. Yeah, from the looks of it, Art is all in on this Thrun. But you know, I mean, honestly, from from the looks of it, it's probably going to be enough. I mean, that's that is the that is the silver bullet against a lot of these blue decks. That is, that, that's a pretty good plan to be all in on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he can try to chump block for a little while, but he doesn't even have Riptide Lab to try to block forever. That's what some of these guys do is just you know blocking yeah. with Snapcaster Mage every turn. And so Art cracks his Art cracks his third windswept teeth. He's mostly just thinning his library. He just he's like I have all land, you know. I want to try to decrease my chances of drawing land as much as I can. From the uh, from the looks of it, I mean Zachary missed his land drop already, so he's he's literally just 
he has to draw land for a couple turns, and he has to to produce a variety of chump blockers, and he needs Art to continue to not draw any action. I mean, it's going to take a, a series of highly improbable events for Zachary to provide any counterplay. Now I'm looking at Art's hand, and it looks like it has a wasteland in it. I'm wondering why he hasn't used that to set Zachary even further back on land. Is that wasteland, or is it Tower of the Magistrate? It looks like Tower of the Magistrate. That must have been what I yeah, was Yeah, that's the anti-equipment technology. All right. You can always make the other guy's equipment fall right off of it. Yep. So, um, I, I think, by the way, speaking of Tower of the Magistrate, these green-white decks have such an incredible selection of lands to go get with the Knight of the Reliquary. The Tower of the Magistrate, Maze of Ith, Caracas, Wastelands, and Horizon Canopy. It's like they have so many different spells that they can access with that guy. Certainly. And uh, that's one of those things that, uh, starting off, Knight of the Reliquary was looked at as really just kind of a, a beast rather than... Yeah, like he's a, a toolbox. Like he, he gets bigger yeah. a little bit, but... And uh, he's really coming to his own as people have, have started to build these silver bullet decks to go and get pretty much the only trick that people played around with in standard was the Sh Sajiri step. Maybe Bajuka Bog, right. but uh, in, in Legacy, there's so access, you have access to so much to just tap a Knight of the Reliquary, speak of the devil. And Zachary had just plowed the uh, the the dried arbor, but it doesn't even matter. He might as well. I mean, his hand is full of plows, counterspells, forcibles, all these cards that are just absolutely incredible against Art's deck, except, except for, Thrun. for Thrun. Except yep. for Thrun. And he's just got to keep everything around Thrun under control so that he can try and figure out what his plan is to just survive long enough to try and come back and get control of this. I mean, at this point, like he's at six life. He's about to get knocked to two. He still doesn't even have his second blue. I mean, he's mana screwed and facing yep. a card he can't beat. I think, I mean, so I guess he gets, he takes the hit, he goes to two, he draws blue, he Vendillion clicks himself, gets rid of one of his plows or something or his counter spells, just to draw another card, has another chump blocker. But, but he, is he, that he's not going to keep this up for very long. Then he draws Batter Skull, and then he blocks, gains four life so that he has time to draw two more cards before he dies. I mean, it's going to take... Uh, I mean, he has to draw it cold. Uh, although, a Stoneforge Mystic to go find Batter Skull would put him at least back in play. He's going to put the Muta Vault in front of Thrun this time. Yeah, it's Preserve it's his life total a little bit. Art actually tapped the Tower of the Magistrate and gave Thrun protection from artifacts, just to see if Zachary didn't realize that Muta Vault wasn't an artifact. Instead, Art's going to use the Swords of Plowshares that's been sitting in his hand waiting for Zachary to do something this game. Uh, no, this one, I, this one is completely a wrap. What is, uh, what is Zachary having his sideboard here, though? So, honestly, as we were saying, I think Thrun is really his biggest problem. He's got another Batter Skull to bring in, which gives him a little more play against it. Um, Elspeth Knight Errant is it definitely could, yeah, another block thing. forever. Could just yep. block Thrun. Just keeps throwing tokens in front of it. Um, do you bring in Wrath of God? Oh, for sure. Wrath certainly. It doesn't even like Wrath is his answer to Thrun, and Wrath is better than Day because it actually hits for generators. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and then Path to Exile I think is actually probably going to be important too, just because uh, it, he's going to need to be able to do things like keep Gaddock Teague off the table. Mm-hmm. Because um, Gaddock Teague actually shuts down Wrath. Yeah. Wrath is just over that threshold, and Zachary realizes what we've been uh, saying for a little while, that we're going to game two, and it's time to pick up that sideboard and start looking for stuff. Uh, meanwhile, Art's actually got a few different options here. Um, Dauntless Escort, it's kind of an interesting card. It actually, even though Wrath beats the Regenerators, Dauntless Escort beats the Wrath by making them all indestructible. But you got to think, he's not thinking about the Wrath. That may be a card that he looks for game three after getting absolutely blown out by Ren. Uh It's definitely possible. The only reason I think he might just board it in in the dark is because he's got a variety of, of cards that aren't uh, super imp impressive against control. And he, uh, like he, you don't just stick Dauntless Escort in the sideboard of Greenson Zenith deck unless you have a purpose, like where you're going to do it. Yep. And the only purpose I can even think of to do it is Wrath of God or, or Damnation. So he has to ask himself, does he think Zachary might have Wrath? Yep. Does it matter enough? I mean, so what are the cards that you think we should be taking out of Art's deck here? Let's see, because I guess he needs to be bringing, like, since he's bringing in Choke and maybe Escort, and that's about it. 
Um, I guess he's he's looking to take out at least one of the swords. Um, very, yeah, at least either one sword or one jite. He's probably gonna take out one of those pieces of equipment. Okay. He's uh, let's see. He. He actually got. He actually doesn't have. I mean, I guess probably a little bit of the spot removal. Now, is the scavenging ooze? You're gonna want that against the snapcaster mages, right? Uh, I'd imagine you do. I mean, I obviously I, I have not yet had experience with it yet, but it just seems like scavenging ooze. He's a beater anyway, and the fact that he can uh, that he can shut down sca uh, the snapcaster mage, path to exile, and snapcaster mage swords to plowshares interaction, mm -hmm. or at least interact with it. Um, I don't think it's like an overwhelming thing. Like he could, he might want to take it out, but I mean he doesn't. He's probably not even going to bring in all that much. You know, mostly just choke. But it's not even clear. Like if he, you know, now uh, in, against this deck, uh, Gaddick Teague shuts off Jace. It shuts off Batter Skull. Force, Force of Will. It shuts off Batter Skull. And Wrath of God if he has it. Right. But is is Gaddick going to be? You probably want to leave it in as the silver bullet, but it's not as devastating against this deck as it is against a lot of the other decks in the format. Oh no, for sure. It's it's a reasonable weapon. It's just it's another bear. It's more you know beating down, but it's another thing to just annoy Zachary. A lot of the decks can't even beat it, or it, it bends them. You know, it, it makes them bend over backwards to try to, to fight it. I mean, Zachary. Most of the people playing blue white are going to have access to four plows and a lot of path exiles and snapcaster mages to get him back and the threat of snapcaster mage blocking Gaddick Teague. Absolutely. Um, the, uh, the, the, the exalted actually becomes much more important in the new world with snapcaster mage because when Gaddick Teague uh, has either a noble hierarch or a Kasali pride mage that just came into play or something like that, you can attack with it a lot more cavalierly without yep. you know, you getting can... blown out. Pumping up to that third toughness becomes much more important when you have a 2-1 flash who can jump in. Additionally, I mean, you also have Caracas, which I'm not sure, I'm not familiar enough with the green-white decks to know for sure if they if they cyborg out one of these utility lands in the right circumstances, but like Caracas still has excellent value with both Cataclysm and Thrun because of just being able to bounce your own guy. Yep, you can save your own guy. I think that's primarily in there against Reanimator, but... Um, Either Jenga Taxis or Iona or, or even your opponent's Emrakul and some other weird combo yeah. decks. But bouncing Gaddick Teague or uh, Thrun, I mean, Thrun in particular is such a devastating threat to him. If he tries to Wrath and there's a Caracas in play, the Thrun's just going to come back down. Absolutely. And it's those types of interactions that separate a lot of the, the really good players from people who just pick up a deck. Because if you pick up a deck and you just think the Caracas is against Reanimator, you might not be thinking about these interactions. So, Zachary leads off, leads off with a Tundra here. Art starts with Mother of Runes. planes and, yep, into Mother of Runes. Yeah, Mother of Runes is just about the uh, the best thing for him to start with. I mean, all he has is a few mana creatures in the Mother of Runes, and the Mother of Runes is the one that forces Zachary's hand immediately. Yep, and Zachary, Zachary does, He doesn't want to path it, you know, immediately, or else Art is already up to three mana. And also, we saw last game where Zachary used a Swords to Plowshares on a Mother of Runes. Doesn't look like he has that here. Then, I mean, if he doesn't if he doesn't plow the Mother of Runes immediately, it just starts becoming, you know, like I would even consider just force of willing it. You know, brainstorm in response, see what you get. And I, I mean, even okay, so he does have the Path to Exile. Yep. And he does not make the classic mistake of waiting to the upkeep, thinking, oh, I want the land to be tapped, and then realize, oh, Mother of Runes, I forgot. Yep. All Still, right. he, this, is not, this is not necessarily, uh, you know, all sunshine for Zachary here. He's, he's got to weather usually at least three early threats before he can uh, even be able to start comfortably doing something on his own. I mean, he's definitely the control deck. Now, the path to exiles came in from the sideboard. Yeah. And I'm sure that Zachary would have rather that that was a swords to plowshares because art gaining one life, he doesn't worry too much about, well, but that extra land. Them, yeah, I mean, he's definitely, yep. he wants as much of that spot rule as possible. I mean, he will play every single path and every single plow. Absolutely. The uh, likely cuts, counterspell type cards aren't particularly good against these green-white decks. Well, they, we, don't, they don't we, have key cards. We can see one force of will in his hand right now, and... 
force of will, such a staple of, of this environment, so important for just keeping yourself safe from the blowout spell. Um, yeah, it's not clear which ones he cut, because I'm mm -hmm. sure he, he trimmed some number of either Counterspell or or uh, Force of Will or uh, Spell Setter Sprite or Vendillion Click. Would Spell Snare be one that you would look at, or is that one it's that... It's possible, because he doesn't need four Spell Snares. Um, there are a number of good targets. You know, there are Stoneforge Mystic, Gaddock Teague, Scavenging Ghoul, you know, Scrib Ranger. And speaking of, I think we're going to see a Spell Snare on a Stoneforge Mystic right here. Here, and one of the nice things about Spell Snare is that it's actually a good tempo play, because uh, if you if you're spending, you know, every time you're path exiling a Mother of Runes, you both spent one, but now he's one ahead of you. Yep. Spell Snare, you get one ahead of him temporarily. Yeah. And now, Art knocked out one of Zachary's tundras. Zachary plays another, plays a Plains, and uh, Stoneforge Mystic searching through. Looks like he's pondering that uh, sort of feast and famine. See, either Feast or Famine or Batter Skull. Depends on which way he wants to do it. He decides We're going to go with Batter Skull. Batter Skull is definitely the safer way. Sword of Feast and Famine is a little bit ambitious. And the problem problem there is that I think that it, you're just there's too many things that can go wrong. You know, you could get blown out by a plow even. Yep. You know, or a maze of it. Batter Skull brings its own guy to, exactly. to wield Batter it. Batter Skull, Batter Skull, you're drawing two different cards that are both giving you, you know. Yep. Whereas you got to keep another card in play in order for Fe Sword of Feast and Famine to be effective. So, Art at this point is just trying to, to make a little bit of forward progress. He's, uh... Sylvan Library is decent, but he's going to start losing some tempo. I mean, the green-white deck's not really trying to grind out the blue-white deck. Oh, wow. Looks so like yeah. Zachary is going to... Force of Will. That's, now, that's... was that a Force of Will removing... A Spell Snare. Spell Snare? It is. Yep. This is exactly what Zachary yep. wants to, to have be going on, you know? He stopped the first three threats and uh, managed to commit something of his own to the board. Yep. We talked about trimming some of the counter spells. One of the nice things about Spell Snare and Force of Will is they can actually give you a little bit of tempo, but they, each one can save you mana. Yep, you're, and, you're getting ahead in terms of resources when you're using those two. So Art sacrifices his Windswept Teeth, finds another Plains, and throws his deck off the table. Understandable from this position. <laughs> Nobody wants to face Stoneforge Mystic. And so now Art has the one planes up. Have we seen any uh, Path to Exile or Swords of Plowshares in his hand right now? No, no, no. Now Art is probably not going to be playing Paths. Uh, in this matchup, them. yeah, he doesn't yeah. have the yeah he doesn't have the paths, Sorry. but he does have the set of plows. But it's very possible that he boarded one out. I mean, like, it's you want to be the aggressor. Yeah. It's fine to have some, but usually you don't want to like you don't want to get stuck where you have reactive cards in your hand against these blue white decks. Because if they ever start jacing, mm -hmm. I mean, you you got to just put pressure on them, put pressure on them, push pressure on them. Art's trying to figure out exactly what he's going to do because he knows that that batter skull is going to be coming down end of turn, and that's going to it, change this up a little bit. It looks like he's a little bit flooded again, but I, I'm guessing we're going to see a Green Sun Zenith for three. No, it's Elspeth. Elspeth. That's even better. Yep. Elspeth is definitely... Uh, Elspeth looks like she's going to start making some friends. Now, that's a very crude way to try to answer your opponent's batter skull. But uh, it is a very powerful permanent that doesn't just get simply beat by the batter skull. You know, can at least hold it off, and if he can get one more thing going... Yep, and it as is putting expected, some pressure. there's Batter Skull. Now, the nice thing about the Batter Skull in this position is that it's going to gain Zachary so much life. Even though it's not making a ton of progress against Art's uh, Elspeth, it's going to gain him so much life that uh, he'll have a little bit of a cushion to work with later. Well, honestly, a few swings from Batter Skull, you don't actually have to be beating Art in order to put yourself pretty much out of out of range of this Green White Maverick deck. Yeah, because one of the things he's going to have to do at some point is consider like some pretty wild attacks just to make sure Elspeth never goes ultimate. Because it's going to be really, really tough if uh, it, like if Elspeth gets up to nine where it can actually ultimate and still be around so that he just has indestructible guys for the rest of the game. Certainly. And sometimes if your life total is a little bit lower, having to attack with all your guys leaves you in such a compromised position. But this Batter, Batter Skull, Skull fixes that. Yeah, Batter Skull is yeah. definitely going to make that a non-issue. And so, looks like this is going to be one of those 
attacks where he just pushes in. Now Elspeth came, comes in with four, went up to five. Yep, correct? and he's surely just going to block the token. The idea being that uh, block the, the token, block the germ. Yeah, and the, the idea being that if he can commit one more good threat to the board next turn, he can actually stabilize because he'll have another Elspeth token to chump batter skull again, and then he'll have yep. whatever good card he plays to hold off Mutavolt and Stoneforge Mystic. So Elspeth coming down to two counters here. And, and another st Stoneforge uh -huh. is going to probably go and get Feast Sword of Feast and Famine. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a, I mean, this is a fantastic line for, for Zachary just because uh, yep. he's going to have a variety of different threats across the table. You know, it's not all, any one thing. So, I mean, because these green-white decks are so good at hosing what, one thing, you know. It, yep. it can be any one thing. You've got to apply a broader strategy in order to put them into, back them into a corner. So Art definitely, I mean, it doesn't really matter which one he plays. He just needs to play something that has a, has a pretty big impact on the board. You know, like Knight of the Reliquary, uh, Green Sun Zenith, uh, I was gonna say Stone now, Forge Mystic. He's got Green Sun Zenith in his hand. One more land gets him up to where he can go and get Thrun. Is that the play here? Hmm. It's possible. The problem with Thrun is that if he goes and gets Thrun, Elspeth's going to die. Because Sword of Feast and Famine, like assuming Zachary has a land, which I guess he doesn't technically have the land yet, but if he has a Well, no, I guess he can't, he can't activate the Mutavol and equip his sword. So actually, he could go get Thrown. So this but is going to be Green Sun Zenith for three. Yeah, it's going to be Knight of the Reliquary, because not only is Knight of the Reliquary so big that he's a brick wall right now, like he's, I mean, he can even hold off Batter Skull right now, but also he's going to, every turn, be threatening to go get another spell. He's going to go get Dryad Arbor, which beats Sword of Feast and Famine, and Batter Skull. It just makes him have protection from artifacts, so the equipment falls off. Uh, Tower of Magistrate. Sorry. Or, yeah, Tower of Magistrate, I'm sorry. And then uh, Maze of Vith can hold off a creature with equipment also. And uh, and at this point, I mean, I actually think Art's yep. going to be doing all right as long as Zachary doesn't produce either a Jace or a Plow or or something, you know? Yep. And Elspeth so sacrificing might... another Windswept Heath, I believe, brings uh, yeah. Knight of the Reliquary up to 5-5. Five, five with three lands in Art's Graveyard, the two Windswept Heaths in the Wasteland. Kind of surprised he didn't go get Dryad Arbor with his Windswept Heath. Just, like, I don't know that he needs as much mana as he has right now, and just having that extra blocker right now just gives you that much more room to, to make sure Elspeth lives as long as you can, you know? Now, Dryad Arbor comes into play tapped. No, 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 right, it just no? has Summoning Sickness. Yeah. Yeah, it can't tap the green, but it doesn't actually, it's not actually tapped. Now, does he, uh... Does he have a swords, perhaps, up oh, in his that, hand? That may be it. Yep. Got a he has, a, he has a spell. A spell. <laughs> Looks like that germ is going to get uh, as big as it can get and just start putting that life total just out of reach. So you've got to think, yep, token is just going to... Suicide is now, way out. Yeah, it would have been nice to be able to put the sword on somebody else so you have two threats, but that knight is so big that he, he can't really afford to do that right now. No, I think this game's actually slipping out of Zachary's... Uh, I mean, he was doing pretty well early, but it's, it's slipping away pretty quickly because now the knight... It's like the knight is drawing a spell every turn. I mean, knight is behaving like a Jace the Mind Sculptor. That, you know, and, but it's also uh, the Abyss, you know, or a moat. For the most part. The tower is going to be absolutely a, an absolute beating and we'll see whether or not Art uses it proactively or reactively because if he searches it out and Zachary's not thinking about it, he's going to just, he's going to lose the germ token and those two equipments are going to be just sitting there not doing right, it. I don't think he's done anything, I don't know that there's anything he can do about it. I think his germ is going to die. Because like, if he doesn't have an answer to the knight now, he's not going to have an answer, you know. I mean, it's too late now. The germ is definitely dead at Art's will. So Now, Art the problem with using the tower here is that he opens it up for Zachary to re-equip one of his other creatures and get in. Yeah, it's, it's weird if this is his main... Like, what, I'm not positive why Art is doing this main phase. But, uh, I mean, either way, it's definitely a very, very powerful play. Yeah, it's, it's certainly the card he wants to go and get. I'm just not sure if that's the time to do it. 
So Tower is going to off the germ. Maybe... Is he somehow playing around Stifle? I don't know. It's strange because... Like in this, in this position, like now he just doesn't have the knight to threaten to block with. But, I'm, I mean, I'm guessing this isn't his first rodeo, and so there must be some... Uh, there's likely some relatively common play. Wasteland's going to take out the tower, which is going to open the door for Zachary to still get some good use out of his equipment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that is for sure step one for and Zachary's comeback. At this point, I think that Elspeth is at four right now. Uh, and so he's got to block the one with the sword. For sure. But Elspeth's going back down to one. And uh, I, that I still, leaves it, it open for Elspeth to be knocked off next turn with an aggressive attack. It still seems so, so, I don't know. I guess I just, it's kind of surprising to have Knight of the Reliquary go for the tower main phase. You know? It didn't seem like Patrick it was Sullivan the most... Uh, and so Bird of, the Bird of Paradise comes down. If nothing else, potentially offering a little bit more breathing room for Elspeth. Um, I still think Art's in real good shape, though. He's, uh, he's likely going to be able to hold on to, to Elspeth, and the fact that Knight of the Reliquary can block and then tap, search, go get like Maze of it, stop somebody else and have a sword. Well, if, if he loses Elspeth, then he doesn't have a way to block anything that's equipped up with that sort of feasting. He's got the Maze of it still in his deck. Yeah, he's got yeah. to so, just got to go and get that. And the Maze of it can combine so well with uh, Knight of the Royal Quarry anyway, just because one of the common plays these green-white decks like to do is attack with a giant knight after damage untap it with the maze yep. just to you know give it vigilance but I mean against the sword obviously maze of it is one of their one of their go-to answers that's part of the beauty of playing with both tower and maze of it is that so many people play with wastelands it's nice to have multiple answers yep and art seems to be trying to figure out exactly what he should be bringing in he's going to bring in a wasteland it's interesting it's not even clear he kept maze of it in after sideboarding yeah he's powering up his knight Pretty well, throwing as many he lands in the graveyard as he can. He's put three there this turn, I believe. Uh, and then when you add in the uh, tower that was wastelanded last turn, he's uh, that knight's gotten a little bit bigger. But as we mentioned, Batterskull giving Zachary a large margin of error, a large margin of life to work with, so that Art's going to have to. I mean, Art is basically just trying to establish control. Their roles have switched, and Zachary is the beatdown. Which now, is a tough thing to do when you haven't really hit your opponent, and he's got a knight and Elspeth going. Now, is that a Jace in Zachary's hand? If it is, Elspeth's going to die. I mean, that's the best thing he could have right now. Is, uh, I mean, wow, I would be surprised. I, I don't think that's a Jace, or else he could just drop Jace, bounce the token, attack with the yeah. sword of guy to kill Elspeth. We'll see. I mean, Jace is the card that you want to draw. And it looks like it is Jace, though. Yeah. It looks like it is actually Jace. Maybe the play, because like... Now that was interesting because he let that through. A single Stone Forge Mystic, not equipped up at all, went after Elspeth and knocked it down to one counter. But this seems like, like if he's going to, if his plan is to go... Jace bounce your Knight of the Reliquary. The, if you let the Elspeth live, it's just going to kill your Jace. And there's Jace. Is he going to well, the brainstorm? Sword of, the Sword of Feast and Famine lets Stoneforge no. Mystic stand in front of... No, no, no. Whatever Elspeth pumps is going to fly. That's true. Yep. So he is brainstorming. That's wild. See, I mean... I don't really know that much about activating Jace, but one of the first things I thought of when I looked at it was if you bounce the token, you can swing with the sorted guy, hit Elspeth, and kill. And that's half the problem solved right there. Yep. Make Art use his knight to go after your Jace. And your and other Stoneforge should stand in the way there. Yeah, you can chump block. Absolutely. You could probably keep your Jace. Like, assuming Art doesn't have anything, you get to keep your Jace. You swing, he'll swing with a token in the knight, you chump the knight. You still have a token that gets through, but it knocks Jace to one. You end up with a Jace on one, 
ver uh, and a sword of feast and famine and a battered skull, and you still have one stone forge left that's already equipped. Versus an Elspeth, or versus just a, a soldier, a bird, and a knight. I I actually I think I think that was the turning point in the game. I mean, that that was that was the move. And Art uses another windswept teeth, searches out a savanna. I mean, do we have any idea how many digits are in Knight of the Royal Quarry's power at this point? Like this seems. Wow, choke. Well, that's gonna be. Uh, <laughs> well, that's gonna be the okay. game. Okay. Man, this game, this could, this would have been such a game if he just didn't have Elspeth, and Zachary just still got, got to keep his Jace. Then he had to fight against Choke. Man, that would have been an exciting one to watch. But it looks like Art is going to uh, make relatively short work. I mean, it's probably going to take a couple more turns, but uh, I don't think it'll be that many. I think, I think. All right, so Elspeth's going to be able to hold off the Sword of Feast and Famine. Knight of the Reliquary will be able to finish finish off Jace, and uh, and then at this point he'll just be choked on mana. So we will see uh, Knight of the Reliquary plus Elspeth pretty much unchecked. The knight is uh, a 12-12. I think he just went to 13-13 there. And the knight, I mean, the knight has to kill Jace this time. But assuming Elspeth lives, it's not going to be that much longer before a knight kills in one or two hits. It looks like it's going to be something other than the knight that's going to uh, oh, go yeah, after yeah. Jace. But yeah, with the plus three, plus three, dice. it doesn't matter. All right. All right, so we're going to make... Who to jump? Probably the bird. Oh, the soldier needs to be able to block the uh, Sword of Feast and Famine creature. Yep. Bird gets in and Jace falls to the Bird of Paradise. Oh, that Dude, probably I doesn't happen that often. Well, <laughs> tell you, man, these kids today, they don't know how good they got it. <laughs> they got Jace the Mind Sculptor in play, and all they want is a brainstorm. That's the thing about Legacy. Legacy players, all they want to do is brainstorm. So bad, they have access to Jace the Mind Sculptor himself, and all they want is a brainstorm. All right, All right. we're it's, uh, we're gonna need. I mean, I, it's gonna be tough because, like, with, with choke. I mean, does he even have any answers to choke? I don't believe no. that. Uh, no, I don't think he does. I don't believe he has a way out from it. I think basically what he's got going is gonna be to have one shot access to blue mana for the rest of the game. And it's not even going to help because that wasteland's going to take care of that tundra. So it seems like what he's going to need to do. The first order of business has to be this knight of the reliquary because he's not in anywhere any position to even do anything about Elspeth. So if he can draw, like if he draws a plow or a path next turn, at least he can stop the knight from continuing to make it worse every turn. And then, and then he's actually. Uh, He's actually not that far away. I mean, he's still not really making forward progress against Elspeth. But Art Art is actually, pardon me, Art is still somewhat vulnerable to a path or a plow yeah. because he has so much invested in that knight. Yeah. So Zachary dropped uh, his, a third Stoneforge Mystic, picked up his deck and started shuffling. That means that he must have left his Umazawa's Jite in the board, which is unfortunate because it would have been pretty strong in this situation. <laughs> Yes, it definitely would have. <laughs> that would have been uh, would have been a nice one. Uh, and and actually, I think we've actually overlooked a way out from underneath choke that's on the board right now. If he can get through with that, are you talking about sort of feast and famine? famine. Oh, that's kind of exciting. The problem is that he's still. I mean, he's quite a way away from even making progress with that because he just keeps running into Elspeth. Certainly, I the but, token coming. But art is flooded. Art really doesn't have a lot else going on, so. The problem, though, is that at this point, Zachary just took lost half his life total to Elspeth, right? To Now, did Elspeth push the... Wait, Elspeth didn't even make a token? I think Elspeth put the knight in the air to go for the two-shot kill. But, but that's not a two-shot kill because you're going to lose your Elspeth because you don't have... Like, the, you're going to lose your Elspeth now. Because the sword sorted and then he, comes through. But, I mean... That is a green creature, ladies and it gentlemen. It is a green creature. Green creature. <laughs> it's been errated to have a little green dot on it, yes, right? Yes, it does. It no longer says this is green. Mm -hmm. It simply has a green dot. 
So, this is just mind-boggling. Is he gonna is he gonna untap his islands or is he gonna kill Elspeth? It's his choice either way. I mean, presumably he has to kill Elspeth. Wow, he was just sucking or, for the Avon mind sensor. We'll just we'll we'll slow roll you a little bit. Avon mind sensor to chump block has decided that instead yeah. of doing what it normally does, and that's presumably the exact reason why Art was so confident. All right, fair enough. And that's going to be game this turn. And once again, night to the air. The players know one more than us. Art defeats Zachary two to one with Green White Maverick over Blue White Stone Void. Uh, very uh, two zero. Yeah, very very decisive. Seemed very clear that uh, I mean, Art's draws were pretty good, but I mean he was kind of flooded too though. I mean, I would have thought that Zachary would have been able to give him a better fight, but I I, I do think that in that game. I do think the turning point was that Jace the Mind Sculptor decision. It would have been a much, much different game if he was able to keep that on the board. Um, and could have been, uh, could, could have been yeah, his who, way around it all. Yeah, who knows which way the wind could have blown. All right, well, SCG Live is brought to you by StarCityGames.com, producer of the world's most advanced Magic Gathering app, SCG Mobile. The app is now free, and you can start accessing StarCityGames.com content from your iPhone instantly. Beyond the basic options, a simple in app, uh, a sin simple, just like the sentence, a simple in app upgrade, in app upgrade, that's a heck of a line. A simple in app upgrade of $4.99 unlocks an ad free experience and expanded functionality, including live pricing, a play player profiles, and premium content access with an existing account. For more information, visit www.starcitygames.com or search for SCG Mobile in the App Store. Coming soon to Android so that I can actually it? use it. Yeah. Dude, talk to me about Blackberries. I don't know anything about Crackberries. All right. <laughs> so, uh, is this how you think that this matchup plays out most of the time? Uh, I'm not even sure because there's so many tactical tactical decisions on both sides. I mean, I I kind of feel like like I mean, I just looking at the paper. I mean, I I, I wouldn't be that uncomfortable.